Good afternoon. This is your host, Rusty James. It is Friday, August 14, 2015, and this is the ride. Okay, my friends and fellow riders, it is Friday afternoon and I thought I would do something special today, so here goes. First of all, I want you to know that I'm human, just as human as you all. I am fallen, individual, but I have been restored by the master. And if you listen to this morning's podcast, you'd know that I was giving you all sorts of encouragement to be gracious in your families. And what do I do during the course of today, but not follow my own advice? Without going into too much detail, I was not gracious to my wife, and I felt the sting of conviction pretty quickly, actually. And I got to realize after I apologized to her that I'm so glad that I felt that. I think that when you let the Lord speak into your life and you are willing to take it, yes sir may have another, somehow he gives you the strength to take it. To take a word that you know is true and and just to quickly turn it around and and you know ask for forgiveness and move on so anyway that was that was one reason why I wanted to have this show today because I want you all to know that eh, I ain't, I'm not perfect just so you know but I had some things that I wanted to talk about as well because This morning when we went by the house and I hit the horn seven times, that was a, it was a type of what had gone on at Jericho where I'm declaring what I believe the Lord gave to us. And I was reading that passage in in Joshua. I want to say Joshua 6. Don't hold me to that. Check it out. You'll find it out. But anyway, a couple things in there that I thought were really interesting. Hold this thought. When you hear the word outrageous, hey man, that's outrageous. Do you want to be outrageous? I think most of the time I'd like to be outrageous do things that are outrageous, unexpected. But if I do something outrageous, the way God sees outrageous, let's say you don't want to go there. There's a point in Joshua where he says, what you have done is an outrageous thing. And then I got to think about the word, outrage us. (laughs) it caused outrage you don't want to cause outrage we'll get to that in a minute you know when Joshua and the army of Israel had gone around Jericho you know each day they would go around once and they would do the horns but they were told to be silent I thought that was kind of interesting I bet you the people in Jericho would look down from their fortified city and think, what do they think they're doing? I mean, they were told not to be loud. They were told to be quiet, except for the horn. 
And I'm thinking, you know, these the the enemies of Israel, the the people in Jericho, are probably laughing. Like, what what do you think you're up to? You're you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything that looks like it's going to do us any damage. In other words, you're not getting any closer to what you want at all. But Israel continued to obey what they were commanded to do through the word from God given to them. Every day, they would go around, do the horns, and be quiet. And the word of the Lord was, you do this six days, and then on the seventh day, you go around it seven times, blow the horns, and give a shout, for I have given you this city. So, you know, by the sixth day, they're like, man, those people are just ridiculing us. We're not doing anything. And that spoke to me, as a Christian, that there are certain things in our society and our culture and stuff where we're standing firm in what we believe and what we declare is a truth, even though the enemy or the world is kind of laughing, saying, well, what you're doing doesn't get you any closer to any goal that we see. And that's the key. The world doesn't see the goal. We've got our eye on the goal. The goal isn't some far off pipe dream. The goal is simply having the Lord God in our life. Because that in and of itself is really the goal. But the world looks at that and says, you know, you're just a bunch of deluded fools. You got nothing going on. It doesn't look to us like you've got anything going on. And yet we are obeying God. And there will be a point when we go around the city seven times I bet you the second time around that seventh day, the second time they've gone around, the people in Jericho are probably going, uh, what's going on? Uh, elbow, elbow, elbow to his neighbor. Uh, wait a minute. Every day they just do it one time and they don't say anything. What's going on? I'm starting to get goosebumps. There's something different going on. Seven times they go around. And then they give the war cry. Now this is the other thing. They were told to shout. You know, Joshua gave the word for them to shout. They said, don't do it until I tell you. And he said, I'm telling you when to do it. And when he told them to do it, they were to shout because the Lord had given them the city. Not that the Lord was about to give them the city. The Lord had given them the city. Do you know what I think? I think the Lord gave them the city on the first day. And they were obediently walking out His directions for that culmination to take place. Shout, for I have given you the city. So, when you're going through life and you're wondering why I don't see what this is doing, me being obedient to scripture, I don't see any benefit here. I don't see any results. You've been given the city, my friend. You maybe just don't see it yet. You keep doing what you need to keep doing. And that city will fall. That city will be delivered into your hands. There 
there was a command that Israel had. The city, the walls fell down. I bet you when they started yelling that they had the, the city, I bet you that Israel had this in their mind that they had it. They, they, by faith, they kind of knew they had it. And even before the first brick started to fall, they knew they had it. And the Jericho people on the wall looking out recognized, I think, that the voice that Israel had at that time was not a voice of, we're going to come and get you. It's more like a voice of, we already got you. And it was like a victory shout. And the wall hadn't even come down yet. But by faith they screamed the shout. And I think that totally blew them off guard. And the world will be blown off guard when you walk through your life given that victory shout even before the walls start coming down. So my encouragement to you is those things that you struggle with, you declare that you already won that victory. Declare it. It's not a lie. What you're doing is in the spirit, you are declaring what has already been given to you. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he gave you everything you need for victory. Everything you need. So don't worry that someone's going to come to you and say, well, that's not true. You're not being truthful. Well, they don't know truth then. Because I know this whole planet will be created, recreated, restored because of what Christ will do when he comes back again. I already know that's a fact. I just don't see it yet with my human eyes, which is bound by time and mortal vision. But in my spirit, man, I know. I can see what has already been won. So that's part one. Here's phase two now. Listen up. Israel was told, when you take this city, it's devoted to me. Now that's a special word that has a special weight. When we think of the word devoted, that means, the way we look at it, we think, you know, if I'm devoted to my wife, I would, you know, lay down my own opinions or my own wants and dreams for her. I mean, that's, you know, when I'm devoted, or maybe it's even lesser uh, strong than that. Maybe you might think that, you know, devotion is simply, you know, making, t you know, keep making time for, for something. If I'm devoted to reading the Bible, I carve out time to make sure I read the Bible every day or something like that. Well, this is a word that's a little bit different. As I understand it, when something was devoted, you need to think about it more in terms of if I'm devoted to my wife, I'm willing to lay down my life for my wife. In fact, more so than that, it's almost like I will lay down my life for my wife. In fact, when something was devoted, it was to be not given for anything else except who it was devoted for. So God said, that city is devoted to me. Essentially, except for the, the silver and the gold and those things which he had a special call for, 
everything else in that city had to be destroyed. That's what that meant. Destroyed. So it's a little bit different than the devotion we think about. So this is devoted things. And God said, do not touch, do not mess around with the devoted things. And don't you know, when they got the city, they were in the city, they had spared Rahab, the prostitute, and her family because she had helped the spies get in there. So they were the one thing not devoted to God. In the term that I'm using, in, in the way that it was used. Okay, so they were spared. They were given a place to live outside the city. See if you can find Rahab in the genealogy of Jesus in the first part of Matthew. I'm just curious. Anyway, so they get in the city and now they're going to go check out some of these other places that they've been you know they're supposed to be conquering this area they, they scout out this area they go to this place oh this is just a small settlement we can handle these guys we'll just bring a small contingent of our army and take them out conquer them because hey look God gave us Jericho this fortified crazy fortified place this will be like a walk in the park so they went to go take care of business and they got trounced They killed some 30 of their people. Yeah, 30-some Israelites were killed. And they said, back off. They came back, gave the report. Joshua tore his clothes, fell on his face, and was wondering, what's going on? I thought you said, you know, didn't we see that the wall came down and aren't you with us blah 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 what was me and then of all things whiner man Joshua it said it would have been better if we had stayed back on the other side of the Jordan these folks you know we pick we pick at them all the time you know we don't they didn't never had the faith that we've got today in our Lexus you know Lexus vehicles and We laugh at them because they didn't have faith and they wanted to go back because God you just you just let us get trashed by the enemy well of course we know the story somebody didn't honor God and messed around with the devoted things the things that were supposed to be destroyed Because they were for God. They were to be destroyed. Gone, baby. Burn it up. And they hung on to it. And uh, the word was, the tribe that's guilty, I will pick who that tribe is. The clan within that tribe that's guilty, I will pick that clan out. The family within that clan, I will pick that family out. And the individual in that family, I will pick that individual out. In other words, God knows if you're messing with the devoted things. Don't be messing with the devoted things. He said it would be an outrageous thing if you messed around with the devoted things. 
So what's the devoted thing now? What are the devoted things now? If we look at the story, the, the devoted things were the things that were supposed to be destroyed. You know why they were to be destroyed? Because it would get their mind off of their supplier. You know, there's all this wealth and fine linens and all these other things. You And you route the city because God destroys the walls and you start taking some of that stuff that God said is for him to be destroyed, you start taking that and all of a sudden you're taking what's not yours. Uh oh. Taking what's not yours. Yikes. I'm feeling a little bit of pain here. That means I can't be I can't be I can't be lusting over something that's not mine. Whether that be an image, a person. Wealth. You name it. I'm sure you can think of stuff. I think that it'd be easy for you to think of whatever it is that you know is pricking your conscious right conscience right now well anyway there are things that are devoted to god and in terms of it needs to be destroyed this guy was holding on to this stuff hiding it in his tent it was in his home it was hidden it was hidden because he knew what he had done was wrong. If it wasn't, if he didn't know that, it wouldn't have needed to be hidden. So what things are you hiding? You don't want God to be outraged. Now we live in, the, in a period of grace where if we fail, he says, bring it to me, confess your sins one to another and he has mercy to forgive not so lucky this guy not so lucky this guy and his family not so lucky this guy and his family and his animals and his tent and his clothes and his money you could say the outrage of the Lord was upon them and they were killed and buried under stones in a field ah uh, before you say that God is so mean and stuff what about the 30 some people that died just doing what they were supposed to do what they were commanded to do because the sin was in the camp that had happened so before you feel all bad for this guy why don't you go talk to the widow of the guy who died you know the week before well anyway how does that apply to today you know how it applies to today get rid of those devoted things there are things that are just, you know they don't need to be in your tent. Get them gone. It's the kind of thing that causes uh, the fog bank to roll in when you, when you really need to be able to see. It's the thing that causes your direction to be kind of, your GPS system to be kind of wonky. It causes you to not be able to hear and not be on the frequency of God your Father. You get rid of the devoted things and you will be able to hear better, see better, walk better, be victorious better. 
and stand up against your enemy better. I don't know. Sounds good to me. It's the, the walking it out that's the, the tougher part. But you know what? Spirit of God is in you. Spirit of God can help you walk these things out. If you think that you fail too much, you think that you always do the cycle where, yeah, yeah, go God, go God, and then fail. And then you say, go God, go God, let's live for God, and then you fail. When you spend time with Him, may, maybe we fail at times, but I'm finding that I actually, when I'm spending time with Him, I may fail at times, but I don't want to fail. Whereas, when I'm not spending time with God, it's almost like the world is kind of pulling me in and saying, fail, dude, you need to fail. And I'm like, all happy about that let's fail because I don't care anymore I don't care but when I hear the word of the Lord in my life and when I see that he's really out to help me and to save me from trouble I start wanting to care and then when you try to help other people and you let the, that Holy Spirit flow through you, it creates this flow that really empowers you. So let's do that. Devoted things, gone. And grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior in the house. Every day is a step of faith, and we're just walking closer and closer every day. How about that? I want you guys to stay tuned for tomorrow. I got a special event going on, another interview with a man who's been involved with music for a great many years. And we're going to hear a little bit about his story and, and some great information. Don't want you to miss that. So check it out. Come back here in less than 24 hours. And uh, I guess that's it. So my friends, stay in the word. Live in peace with your neighbors. Love your family. Share the gospel. And I will see you on the flip.